Today, Chef Jody Brown will enlighten us on the importance of incorporating raw foods into our diets, as well as provide green smoothie demonstrations and samples. So, a little bit about our speaker today. Jody Brown is a native Bostonian uh, who moved to the South in 1997 and quickly fell in love with the people and the climate. She has a certificate in plant-based nutrition from the T. Colin Campbell Foundation at Cornell University, as well as extensive professional background in and a penchant for outstanding food and international travel. Me too. Her business combines her knowledge and passion for food and culture with her Cracker Jack organizational skills. In addition to hosting retreats at the Escape Spa at Wind Creek, she also does in-home food makeovers, teaches classes, gives demonstrations, and lectures on modern day issues that plague our health. She shares her time between Pensacola and New Orleans and can be frequently found hanging out on the grassy lawn at Bayfront Park. Reminder, today's seminar will be recorded and posted on the Southern Lifestyle website. So if you want to go back and review some of what we discussed today, you'll have the opportunity to do that after March 15th. And also, if any of your coworkers wanted to participate and did not have the opportunity today, be sure to let them know that it's going to be available. I also wanted to remind you that we are going to continue to celebrate nutrition this quarter. Um, and our last big push is going to be a part two of our Eat Right for Life Challenge. I don't know, did very many of you participate in the Eat Right for Life Challenge last year? Okay, a few of you. Um, this program really had high accolades in our company last year, and we actually have the second uh, version of that program called Eat Right for Life on the Go that is going to kick off on March 18th. And that is a six-week program that will go until April 30th. So next week, be looking in your bins for your new book. On that note, please join me in welcoming Jody Brown. Thanks, y'all. Makes me happy that I didn't scare you away. There's a handful of you that decided to come back for some more, which is exciting. How are y'all doing? Everybody all right? Who, who ordered this cold weather? It was nice yesterday. It's a little bit too much for me today. Um, we are going to talk about, I'm going to give you a very, a very brief introduction on uh, raw foods, and we're going to talk uh, about what I like to call green smoothie love. You all uh, who were here last week, uh, last time got to taste a green smoothie that I had uh, made before, and now you're going to get to see me make one. So quickly, this is what we're going to cover today. We've got a lot of material to cover, but I tried to cherry pick the stuff that I thought was important, and uh, you're about to get on the right side of that. We're going to talk about what the actual term raw means. We're going to talk about why it is beneficial for your health. And we're going to talk about what foods are good to start including in your diet to increase your nutrient density. Nutrient density is my game. I do not live a completely raw lifestyle. I do not live a completely vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. I include a lot of those lifestyles into the one I created for myself. So just so you know, this weekend I was um, up in Bennington, Vermont. I was flown in to be a chef for an event for four days, and while I was there, I had chicken, bacon, pork, and steak. So I live in a real world. I don't, um, I'm not up here telling you that all of that stuff is bad. What I am telling you is you've got to up the percentage of plants in your diet and reduce the amount of animal products in your diet. I'm paying the price for it this week because I have been away from it for so long. But again, I've got to tell you, that marinated flank steak and mashed potatoes with lots of cream and butter did not taste bad. So I'm not here. I'm here to just try and get you to swing in the other direction a little bit more. I don't want to seem like I'm playing hardball. I want to give you a quick reminder of why green is great. We talked last time. If you, know, if you were here last time, I talked green a lot and about acid and alkaline. We're going to talk about the benefits of green smoothies, and then I'm going to give you a quick demo on how to make smoothies so that you can start playing with them yourself at home. So as you know, I have a certificate in plant-based nutrition from the T. Colin Campbell Foundation at Cornell. I do in-home food makers, overs. I do corporate events like this. I do wellness retreats, educational stuff. I'll talk to anybody who will listen to me. And I just landed a job in Bennington, Vermont that takes place 110 days a year as a private chef at a music school. And I will start that in mid-May at the Sonatina School. 
So I'm going to be all over the place. The other thing I wanted to remind you quickly, the weekend after I was here last, I had a food makeover retreat. There's another one coming up in April. You can go to this website and get some information. It will be a crash course on how to logistically change over to a more plant-based uh, food world. So raw by definition. There's a lot of gray area in the hippie community, as I like to call my community, of what exactly constitutes raw. It's somewhere between 105 and 116 degrees, depending on who you talk to. Basically, anything you heat over 115 degrees is no longer considered raw. So if you see processed foods in the supermarket that are raw kale chips, for example, and they look like they're dried and crunchy, they have been dehydrated, which means that the water has been pulled out of them for very long periods of time at very low temperatures. So like when I make kale chips at home, it takes me five hours to dehydrate a kale chip into a chip. So that's what raw constitutes. When we see a lot of uh, recipes for raw foods, they may mix things up and make them wet and then put them in dehydrators for long periods of time to, to uh, remove the water from them so that they're still constituted as raw, and it's sort of like a quasi-cooking method. So depending on who you talk to, they will tell you it's either somewhere between 106 and 115 degrees. I just say anything under 115 degrees is considered raw. Now, we talked a little bit about this last time, and I'm just going to review. Does that mean all cooked food is bad? No, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on, but it means that you've got to get more raw food into your life because it has maximum nutrition in it. When we heat things over 115 degrees, we start losing their nutritional value. So the point is to get more nutrient dense, more raw foods into your world. Sprouting is another thing that the raw people do. <clears throat> um, you will see the term frequently on flowers in uh, the supermarket. Um, like the, you might see raw almond, sprouted almond flour. And what that means is the outside of all nuts and seeds have a protective coating on them that Mother Nature put there to keep them from sprouting when, they, when they're not ready to grow. So if you gather up a bunch of seeds and you put them in a, in a burlap bag, you're going to throw them in a closet somewhere. You don't want them to sprout. I'll, you know, they don't want them to start sprouting. So the, it's called phytic acid, and it's on the outside of all seeds and nuts. So what they do is they soak that off to sprout it. That means that they've taken that layer off. And then usually what they've done is dried it again or dehydrated it at a long and low temperature and then ground it up. So that's what, you, what, that's what the term sprouted means when you see that. You will also see in the produce section of the supermarket sprouts. Alfalfa sprouts, radish sprouts, those are actual sprouts with little tails on them. That is the ideal food, folks. You need to, if you really want to concentrate on getting more food into your, uh, more nutrients into your life, that's a good way to do it. And the reason that sprouts are so good is because they are living, breathing organisms. Plants are fresh, but we've cut them from their life source. So sprouts have enzymes, especially in them, that are really beneficial to the system. So start throwing a few in your smoothies in the morning or start tossing some on your salads at night just to get the benefits of having good live raw food in your system. So the benefits of eating raw foods, which ideally we're just going to focus on raw foods, is being nutrient dense. That's where you're going to get maximum nutrition out of everything that you're eating is in raw food form. So the, the benefits of eating raw is you're going to have vastly improved health, health and loss of many of your ailments because when your body gets what it needs to function, i.e. macronutrient nutrients, which are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals, when your body gets what it needs, it starts to sing. It responds in the way it needs to. When you give your body everything that it needs to for all the metabolic <laughs> reactions to take place inside, you're just going to start feeling better. It's the bottom line. Uh, youthful look and reversed aging. Who in this room doesn't want that? Right? I have actually, I know you're going to think I'm crazy when I tell you this. My gray hairs have stopped coming in because of my diet. It's amazing. Uh, and I, if you see people, I can't live at the raw rice lifestyle. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a commitment. You see people who are living the raw lifestyle, they glow. They glow from the inside out. Your skin is a direct 
commentary on everything that's going on internally in your system. Longevity, I don't know about you, I want to live, as long as I'm healthy, I want to live a good long life for sure. Uh, another benefit is increased energy. You know, again, once your body starts getting what it needs, you can function at a higher level. Your energy will go through the roof. Improved eyesight and no more gray hairs. I thought it was all a lie, but it's true. So are these items better cooked? We hear about lycopene, right? They're shoving that down our throat all the time. Lycopene, lycopene. Look, I got more lycopene in your life. Well, the rumor is, is that the best way to get lycopene is through cooked tomatoes instead of raw tomatoes. So that's one of the things that where cooked is better than raw. It doesn't mean you shouldn't have raw. It means if you're going to try and get that nutrient, you want to get some cooked tomatoes in your life. Carotene, they claim is a better uptake. You see, anything that's orange has got carotene in it. Um, it they, say, they claim there's a better uptake with a little bit of uh, cooking. Now, we're not going to cook cantaloupe, and cantaloupe's one of the best, most alkalizing things you can put in your system. So you can get a little both ways, but make sure that you're cooking them. The cruciferous vegetable thing I could be a whole class in and of itself. The cruciferous vegetables are cabbages, bok choys, um, broccoli, cauliflower, the winter crops that we're enjoying here in the south right now. They claim that they have goiterogens. For anybody who's got thyroid issues, goiterogens will affect your thyroid. And they say that if you eat too many raw cruciferous vegetables, you can have issues with the goiterogens. So again, I sit on the fence. You don't want to, it, all or nothing is a recipe for disaster. So what I'm telling you is you don't want to just do raw kale. You don't want to just do raw cabbage. You want to have some cooked stuff in there as well. That's one of those things that you want to have a good balance of. So here's a big conundrum. And the question that a lot of people are asking, is raw better? Is it really the better lifestyle to live? Is that where you're going to get optimal health? Or are those people just better because they're eating more vegetables? No one really knows. The raw people will tell you it's all about being raw. My point, just eat some more fresh fruits and vegetables. You're going to get better either way. So let's go to the handouts and talk about what's in front of you. So how do I get more, how do I get more raw into my world? That's what we want to know, right? We're going to, smoothies are going to be completely, um, a completely different thing. So we're going to follow up with those afterwards. So snacks. Make sure your nuts are raw, not roasted and salted. You're going to get maximum nutrition out of raw nuts. Um, raw nut butters. When you see, you know, almond butter is in the supermarket, right? They've got almond butters and cashew butter. I'd crawl over broken glass to get through a jar of cash, raw cashew butter. I'm telling you, it's the best thing you'll ever put in your mouth. I cut up an apple and slather it on. Oh, my God, makes me so happy. Um, but if you're going to have nut butters, you want raw nut butters, not roasted nut butters. That's where you're going to get maximum nutrition. You can make your own trail mixes. You know, buy raw nuts, some dried, unsulfured, unsweetened fruits. The, if you look at the um, perfect example of um, sulfured fruits, who here eats apricots, dried apricots? They're delicious, right? The bright orange ones, they're sulfured. You want the ugly brown ones. If it's really pretty, it's usually not the better choice. Um, hummus, you can make from nut meal. Anybody in this room know what nut meal is? OK, I make my own nut milks, right? And all nut milks are almond milk, um, uh, sunflower milk. You can make pumpkin milk. All they are is water and nuts ground up in a blender and drained. That's all they are. That's what you're buying on the supermarket shelf when you're paying a fortune for almond milk. That's what you're getting. It's got a lot of um, chemicals in it. But what's left over is a really ground up meal. You can dry it and grind it into flour if you're that adventuresome. Or you can take and make like a hummus spread out of it. Whatever is left over, mix it with some herbs and make like a spread out of it for crackers or to spread on your, uh, your uh, roll-ups and stuff. So that's when I said hummus made from nut meal. Or you can have things like dehydrated kale chips. So it's not the end of the world if you're starting to transition. Just start substituting. I think I said this the last time I was here. It's not about what you can't have. If you slowly but steadily keep adding good things in, it will push the bad stuff out. That's what you want to focus on doing. So as I said last time, if you do just one thing, 
and one thing consistently, like smoothies, and in a few weeks you add something else to it. Whoops, wrong button. <clears throat> Sweet treats. This is where I struggle all the time. The two things that most people struggle with in transitioning to a healthier food lifestyle is sweets and snacks. What do we do with the in-between? Medjool dates are nature's candy. If anybody has ever had a medjool date, it's sticky, tacky, really delicious. Um, I sometimes just stuff half a walnut inside of them and make little treats out of it. They're a great way to get your sweet fix while having your fiber still intact. Um, you can make raw brownies. I make raw brownies all the time. Uh, in one of the Pensacola Magazine articles, it's on my website, there is a recipe, I think it was this summer sometime, for raw brownies um, that, that are really great. You can make your own power bars out of raw nuts and seeds. I make ice cream out of frozen bananas and mango. It will blow your mind. It's so easy and delicious to make. There's a video for that on my website. Cashew creams. You can put cashews in a blender with some water, a little vanilla, and a little bit of lemon, and it will taste like cheesecake. Pour it on top of some fresh berries. Sprinkle some nuts on it. Um, it's amazing. Um, there are a million raw food recipes out there for desserts. There's some people doing some fascinating stuff, some really complicated stuff, and some really simple stuff. You can make raw pies. I make, um, I make, I'm sorry, puddings. I make chocolate avocado pudding. I put an avocado, some cacao powder, honey, and water in a blender, and I make chocolate pudding out of it. And if I didn't tell you it was avocado, you wouldn't know. <clears throat> pies, I make a raw key lime pie. Raw key lime pie. Who, likes key? Who doesn't like key lime pie, right? I make a nut crust with medjool dates and nuts. I mix up some coconut, some uh, little cocoa, uh, coconut oil, some lime. Pour it into thing, and I've got I've got refrigerated, got rocky lime pie. There's a lot of great raw desserts that you can make. Dehydrated fruits. My crack is dehydrated um, mango slices um, that aren't sulfured or sweetened. When I need a little fix, they travel well in my bag, and I can have something all the time. Fruit leathers. Who's seen those fruit roll-ups that kids eat all the time? Poison. You can make your own by puree and bananas. Pour them on a Teflex sheet, put them in a dehydrator, and you can make your own fruit leathers. You can do it with any fruit. And this is, in the picture here is raw truffles. Tell me that doesn't look delicious, right? You know what that's made out of? Cashew butter, cacao, and honey. Rolled up into little balls. Nutrient dense and delicious. The hardcore raw food people will literally make lasagnas out of raw food. And the way they do that is they'll take a mandolin, which slices things super thin, and they'll slice vegetables on it and layer it with tomato sauce. They make nut cheeses, cheeses out of things like cashews. Um, there's a variety of things that they can do with that. Stuffed peppers, they will make a uh, varying degree of things to stuff inside a pepper that are all raw. Salads. Lettuce wraps and green wraps are a big popular thing. You can, um, I talked a little bit about making the hummus spread right out of nut meal and I'm not suggesting you all go home and do this I'm just giving you a crash course in in this but if you've got that nut meal you've got protein right that's what that is nuts and seeds are protein spread that on a lettuce leaf put some fresh vegetables in there make a, a drizzle of whatever you want on top a dressing if you're so inclined throw a little chicken or a little fish in there you're still getting a lot, a lot of other really great things with it uh, they dehydrate, I'm not a big fan of. They'll mix a lot of beans and meals and stuff together and make their own burgers and dehydrate them. I got no time for that stuff, but I'm telling you, it's part of what they do. And it depends on what you're trying to achieve in your life. You can, you can go up to that. They dehydrate breads, pizzas, and veggie burgers. And I will tell you, I make a bread out of onions. I take a mandolin and I slice them super, 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 super thin. And then I take pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, and I grind them into flour, and I mix it up with a little bit of soy sauce, a little water, and I, and I flatten it out, and I dehydrate it, and it's like a caramelized onion bread. It's completely nutrient-dense. It's delicious. It's raw. But I got no time to do it in my life. <laughs> I make it like three times a year now, and people lose their mind. So what I'm saying is, is you just want to try and grade up. you got to start somewhere. We're going to start with smoothies and salads. And if you decide that you want to do more things, there are more choices for you. This is at the hardcore end of raw, but this is what some people are doing and having success with. 
We talked a little bit about salad top toppers last year. How do I take a salad and turn it into a meal, right, without a breast of chicken or a piece of fish? You can do it with sprouts. Slaws, kimchi, sauerkrauts, and any fermented cabbages are super good for you. Who in this room has heard about probiotics? Have you heard the term probiotics? OK, pay attention to that. Fermented foods have probiotics in them. The very quick and dirty on that is we have bugs that live in our gut that keep us functioning at our optimal health. When we take antibiotics, those it, antibiotics are our friend when we need them. They kill out all the bad things in your system, but they also kill out all the good. And if you don't replenish the probiotics in your system, your body will never function correctly again. So you, it's really important if you've been on antibiotics ever in your life and you have not followed up with probiotics, start doing it now. You need to build that up. And a great way to get probiotics in your life is sauerkrauts, fermented foods. You can buy pill form if you are going to get probiotics. If you're going to run to the store and talk to somebody about getting probiotics, do not buy dried pill form. You should get it in the refrigerated food section. They are alive. You want a powder. You want a um, liquid. Um, yogurt has probiotics in it. Some yogurt has probiotics in it. Um, kefir is another thing. So those are the things that you want to pay attention to. Um, but it's super important. I make green mango and papaya salad all the time. People love that. Just another way to make a raw, non-lettucey green salad. Raw nuts are a great thing to throw on top of your um, salad to fill you up. Dried fruits, um, berries, and avocados. Fat is not your enemy. Your body needs fat to function. It needs good, healthy, plant-based fat. Avocado's your friend. This is the before and after picture of basically what I start my day with every day, which is a green smoothie. Now, there's a variety of ways that you can make green smoothies. Um, and there's a bunch of things that are really important. So let's talk, let's go over to the, flip that page over <laughs> and talk a little bit quickly about this. Um, green smoothies are, again, if you do nothing else in your life but this and do it every day, your life will change. I can guarantee you it will change. You'll start wanting to have more um, healthy foods. They're quick, they're easy, and they're delicious. And my favorite thing that people say to me all the time is, oh, clean the blender in the morning? Are you kidding me? I'm not cleaning the blender. OK, well, how much do you care about yourself, first of all? And if you make the smoothie and pour it into the container you're going to drink from, you don't have to clean the blender. All you got to do is rinse it out. Because if you let it sit, then you're going to have to clean it. <laughs> So if you pour it into whatever it is that you're going to have, you don't even have to clean it. We're not using animal products, which you have to be really careful with cross-contamination. When you're using any animal products, things should always be cleaned with soap and water. I'm not saying that you never have to clean them with soap and water. But when you're on the fly in the morning and you want to get out in the house, if all you're putting in is greens and fruits, it's not going to be a problem to not wash it with soap and water. It's not the end of the world. So just rinse it out quickly, turn it upside down, and it's clean. So I, I also say that, and I can, this is a, another class for another time, but getting yourself organized, at the supermarket now, you can buy cut-up fruit and you can buy washed greens. So people who tell me they can't do smoothies are lying. They just don't want to do it. All you got to do is pull one box out and the other box out. Somebody else is doing all the work for you. If you want to learn how to wash and prep, I'm going to talk a little bit about that stuff so that you can do your own. That's great. But the supermarket's already doing it for us. So go ahead. What's your I'm question? I'm trying to remember what she mentioned about frozen fruit. Good question. She's, the question is she wanted to remember what I asked about frozen fruit. We're not making daiquiris. So we don't want completely frozen drinks. And what I like to do in the morning is I use one fresh and one frozen. Because I don't like mine at room temperature. So it takes just, gives it just enough chill to, um, to make it pleasant to my palate. That's what I do. You can put frozen fruit in. It's always better than canned. 
But I like to do, a, I'd like to do, like when berries are in season, right? We live in a great place for strawberries and blueberries. If you take those berries and you freeze them on a cookie sheet, put them in the freezer and put them in and let them freeze, then you can take them out. They'll be frozen individually. You dump them into a Ziploc bag and you can take handfuls out as you need them. If you put them all in one bag when you bring them home from the berry farm, they'll freeze in a big giant chunk and you'll be in there with an ice pick. So if you freeze anything individually, so like when mangoes are on sale, because mangoes aren't indigenous to this area, though I wish I really wish they were, um, I slice them up and freeze them on cookie sheets. And just when they're frozen, I scrape them off and put them in bags, and then I have that handful of what I need when things are ripe, in season, cheap, and at their best. So green smoothie is quick, easy, and delicious. It's a great place to hide nutrition for picky kids and picky adults. We've got some supplements we're going to talk about here. It's a great place to um, add things quickly. It fills you up. Uh, fiber is super important. I get the question a lot, uh, should I be juicing or should I be doing smoothies? And I think in an ideal world, you do both. Um, for me, I teach smoothies because almost everybody I know has a blender in their house and not everybody has the means or the desire to buy a juicer. Um, so. Fiber is an, an important part of elimination in the body and cleansing, not just elimination, but cleaning out the system. We hear about fiber all the time. So with a smoothie, you're going to get fiber as opposed to with juice, you're just going to get mainline nutrients with no. You'll get the water or the hydration with it, but you won't get any um, fiber. And I think fiber is an important part of the elimination. A lot of people go on these cleanses that are just liquid. They're not even smoothies, they're just liquid. And I think the body needs to be supported. And as it's dumping those toxins into the system, it's important to have fiber to pull it out. Water, fruits and vegetables have water, keeps you hydrated. Um, ground foods make nutritional uptake easier. We as Americans are always in a rush. We don't masticate enough. We don't chew our food enough. So the great thing about this smoothie is it's basically chewing it for you. I know that sounds sort of crazy, but it puts it into your system in a form that you can uptake and use pretty quickly. So you might be thinking you're eating all sorts of great stuff, but if you're not chewing it, your body's not getting the maximum benefit of it. So it's another reason smoothies are great. <clears throat> and you can make it a meal replacement with these supplements here, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in a minute. So on the top of this handout, right? Rotate your foods. I mentioned this last time I was here, especially your greens. We have a tendency to keep going. To, oh, there I am. I thought I went out for a second. We have a tendency to keep grabbing for the things at the supermarket that are washed and easy, like spinach, right? Lots of people just keep going back and having spinach every day, um, which I'm not trying to discourage. But if you do nothing but spinach every day, there are oxalates in spinach, and you can get a little bit of a toxicity going. I rotate my greens by buying what's on sale this week. That's how I do it. So um, make sure that you rotate everything because everything has a different nutritional profile. Like we were talking earlier about um, carotene, right? Everything that's orange in it has carotene in it. You need carotene. The dark, um, low glycemic fruits like berries, they've got a lot of different things that you need. So just keep your food rotated. It's really important to do that. Um, you can freeze, cook, as I said, freeze on uh, cookie sheets and then bag, and we want it cool, not frozen. You are ahead of your time, my friend. <laughs> <clears throat> so there's four basic elements to a smoothie. The first and foremost is fruits. Ideally, keep in mind, ideally, this is called a green smoothie, and we want to have maximum green in what it is that we're eating. Ideally, we want it to be more green, but I'm trying to win friends and influence people. And I'm not going to do it by handing them something that looks like and tastes like swamp water. I'm not, it's just not going to happen. So you want to start out by adding as much fruit as you need to to make your palate happy. And then as you go along, you want to add more green to it. Because this isn't about a fruit drink. It's ultimately about a green drink. So you want to focus on one of the lower, you want to think about lower glycemic fruits. So what I do is I, I like tropical fruits. If I lived on the equator, I'd be the happiest girl in the world. I'd be eating mangoes and papayas and bananas and pineapples. They have a high sugar content. So I usually go with one tropical fruit and then one that has a lower glycemic index. And that's how I have 
found for me the happy, the happy medium for me. And the lower glycemic index ones are berries, grapefruit, cherries, and anything else that is tart. Apples and pears are also on the lower glycemic index scale, but here's the bad news with those. If you don't have a powerful blender, they will make your smoothie like applesauce. And a lot of people get consistency issues with that. So I don't recommend, I recommend that you eat your pears and apples until you can afford uh, a, a food processor that's uh, stronger. Um, tropical fruits I mentioned. Melons are all alkalizing to the system. We talked about acid and alkaline the last time I was here. Even though melons are sweet and um, fruit, they are super alkalizing to the system. So when they come in season, make sure you get enough of those um, going on. And I start with two fruits, one regular and one frozen, and always move towards green. So the greens, we want to go with flavor first. You want to put in, if it means you start with one leaf of romaine lettuce, that's what you start with. Next week, it's two. The week after that, it's three. You want to, what you want to do is please your palate first and then add more green to it as you go. The least innocuous greens are spinach, romaine, lettuce, parsley. Some might argue cilantro. A lot of people don't like cilantro. Cilantro and parsley are super great for cleaning your liver. I highly recommend you get those into your, um, in your rotation. And you want to upgrade and increase quantity as you can. The darker and more bitter the greens are, the better they are for you. There's two varieties of kale. There's some escarole dandelion greens. Nasty tasting to some people. But as your palate gets a little bit more um, educated with greens, you can start adding those in. Those are your ideal drinks. And ultimately, the reason that we're drinking green smoothies is to alkalize our system. So if you're going to use liquids, you're going to use water, good quality water, green tea, coconut water, or nut milks. Nut milks um, I don't particularly like with green. But sometimes I feel like I want a chocolate shake. I don't feel like I want a green smoothie. And I'll put a banana, cacao powder, which is raw cacao powder, which is loaded with calcium, manganese, magnesium, lots of really great bone building things in them, with some nut milks in a blender and make myself a chocolate shake that's nutritious and delicious. So that's why I have nut milks up there. Uh, I've got pointed out here on the bottom, carrageenan. Most of the nut milks, and I hate to be the big dark cloud, but most of the nut milks on the shelves in the supermarket have carrageenan in it. It comes from Irish moss, which is uh, a, a plant from the sea, and it is a known carcinogen. So you need to know that if you're looking to stay away from those things. Food-based supplements. There are a million. There's everybody selling something out there. I am not endorsing any of these products up here. Be abundantly clear on that. These, I, when I do retreats and I do events, I bring a variety of different things for people to look at and ask me questions about. So I'm just going to tell you a couple of things quickly about this. Protein powders, we hear a lot about protein powders. And whey-based protein powders are, animal food, are based in animal products. I am, again, trying to push people more towards plant-based items. This is a pea protein. It's a vegetable-based protein. If you feel compelled to add protein to your body, I would push you towards something that is pea-based. In this one in particular, the, this scoop has 28 grams of protein. That's all the protein I need for a day. So maybe what I do in the summertime, because I eat a lot less in the summer, I feel like I'm not getting enough food, I might just put a half a scoop in just to bump up where I'm at. Um, so anybody who tells you there's no protein in vegetables, is lion. So um, this product I like because it's big and it's cheap, and I read a lot of labels before I decided to buy that one. Um, we've also got hemp seeds here and hemp protein. Hemp protein is nothing more than ground up hemp, hemp seeds. Um, and again, after this is over, you're welcome to come up and shake a few in your hand if you've never had them or try them or ask me any questions about it. Spirulina is algae that grows in the ocean. This and chlorella, which are also um, both, both high chlorophyll based, are just about the two best green things you can put in your mouth. There's a variety of different brands and ones out there. These were on sale, so I bought them. Um, green powders. I've got two up here. This is my new personal favorite one, just because it's got things that my body needs in it right now. 
One of the things you need to pay attention to is uh, two things that you need to pay attention to. Vitamin B12, when you start taking less animal products in your body, your B12 intake goes down. Uh, this powder in particular, two tablespoons of it gives me 512% of my daily allowance of uh, daily uh, required B12. It's got a lot of sea vegetables in it, and I, I like this one. This one I like as well. The one thing I will tell you with green powders, and some of them have probiotics in them. They all claim to be a bunch of different things. Some of the uh, places that you would shop for things like this offline will sell small individual packets so that you can buy them and test them and see whether you like them or not. The one thing that's usually the deal breaker with most people is stevia. A lot of companies use stevia to sweeten their green powders, and it's, it tastes like uh, artificial sweetener, and not anybody, everybody likes that. If you're going to spend 25 bucks on a on a can of powder, you want to probably give it a whirl before you do, or make sure that there's no stevia in it if you don't like the flavor of, um, of artificial sweeteners. Maca powder, um, this is keeping me from Orleans Parish Prison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm menopausal. This is keeping my hormones level. <laughs> it's a great, it's a potato. It looks like a potato. It's a root dried and ground up. It's a hormone stabilizer, and it will give you energy. This is the single best thing I've done for myself in the last year. Chia seeds. Uh, yep, ch 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 chia pet, same thing. Chia seeds are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids and fiber. They get gelatinous when you put them in water. I drop a tablespoon in my um, smoothies in the morning. Um, and because of the gelatinous nature, they help to um, pull toxins out of your system. So I highly recommend these. And these are both in these things. And then this is goji berries, which actually grow well in this climate, from what I'm told. Um, they are about as antioxidant rich as you can get. They look like little raisins. They're not very exciting looking. Uh, they're a little tart. Um, but they are um, things that I consider putting in. Bee pollen is another one. What else did I skip over? I didn't bring bee pollen with me. Flax meal will do the same thing that chia does for you. Exact, pretty much the same profile. Um, bee pollen is known as nature's vitamin. Uh, it's got vitamins and minerals in it. I highly recommend that. And blue-green algae um, is super... Um, uh, anything that comes out of the sea is pretty much good for you, with the exception of what I pointed out, which is the carrageenan. Um, sweeteners, I think, are on the next page. If you use ripe fruit, you don't need sweetener. You don't need it. Bananas should be brown when they go into the blender. We have, when you buy things at the supermarket, let them continue to get ripe on your counter at home. Don't just come home and bring them, put them in the fridge, leave them out on the counter and let, them, let their natural sugars enhance. Stevia, there's two different types of stevia you'll see out on the market. One looks like that sweetener, white. It's been stripped. It's been chemically treated to get. It may be a natural sweetener, but there's not, nothing natural about what they do to it to make it white. So if you are inclined to want to have a sweetener that is an alternative sweetener, go for the stevia, but get the green powdered version. Look online for a reputable um, dealer. Stevia looks just like a mint leaf. You can grow it here in your own backyard. And the green powder is just dried ground up leaf like you would get ground oregano at the supermarket. It's the same thing. You want to stay away from the ones that's have had the chemical intrusion. Raw local honey, if you must have a, a liquid sweetener, I highly recommend that. And for those of you who bake, you can't just put honey in a dish, right, that requires granulated sugar. What I recommend is coconut sugar because it's the same consistency, less processed. The sugar that we have, the white sugar, is, again, poison. Anybody who told you agave was good for you lied. It's the biggest joke perpetuated on humans in the last three years. It is actually worse for you than high fructose corn syrup. Yep. And aspartame. I said this last time I was here, and I'm going to say it again this time. If you hear nothing else that comes out of my mouth and do nothing else that I suggest today, do not touch aspartame again. It's a neurotoxin. It is the worst thing you can put in your mouth. That's NutraSweet, uh, the blue stuff, the pink stuff, the yellow stuff. It's poison. It's poison. Don't consume it. Uh, the green superfood in the jar. I 
Can you overdo it on B12? Or Probably. I don't do this every day. I don't do it every day. Uh, let me repeat that question because everybody can't hear it. They're recording this. She asked if you can overdo B12 because there's 512% of the B12 in this thing. And I say, yes, you, you can. And I don't do this every day. I only do it when I feel like I'm not getting enough stuff. You know, I just pump it up occasionally. The hemp seeds? Mm-hmm. Would you test positive on a drug test if you ate too many of those? I don't know. That's an excellent question. Well, then go for the pea protein. Let's just not even play with it. <laughs> okay. But that's an awesome question. Here's a, he, and here's the deal. You can't even grow hemp in this country. Okay. Right. Even though it's in a completely different variety, the U.S. government won't well, let you like do it. Comes, yep. Excellent question. And I'll have a better answer for it next time somebody asks me because I will look into that. So um, I want to thank the people at Floribama Farms once more for providing the stuff. I have made two bunches of smoothies. I'm going to get up and show you how to do a smoothie. I'm going to talk quickly. But in the back, we're going to do um, two different sides. I made one with cilantro. Not everybody likes cilantro. So I made one with cilantro, banana, and blueberries in water. And then I made another one with romaine lettuce, um, blueberries, and bananas, and water. So um, Debbie will tell us which side she's going to put one on. She's going to pour little samples for you to taste. That might settle a little bit between when she pours and when you leave, so don't freak out. Just do the shot. It won't kill you. Um, so what I, what I am going to tell you, though, one of the great things about romaine lettuce and why I used it today, because you can buy those romaine lettuce hearts in the supermarket. You ever notice how long those things last in your fridge? Forever, right? So they're great, you can, and they don't have a lot of flavor, but they got a lot of nutrition and fiber in them. You can use them for wraps. You can put a little dollop of hummus and some salad in there and use it as a bread substitute. Um, so it's a really cool thing to um, do. And let me just say in conclusion that I want you to do this. That's all I'm asking. I gave you a lot of information today. I'm not asking you to jump through hoops. I just want you to eat more fresh fruits and veggies and raw when you can. And remember, Hippocrates, who's the father of modern medicine, 400 years ago, he said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. It's not rocket science. If your body gets what it needs, it will perform. But because we are eating so many dead foods, our bodies aren't able to do what they need to. Whoops. <clears throat> let me go back. And we're going to talk about smoothies. So I'm coming up here so that you can see me. Probably, do we want to turn that off? Um, what I do is, thank you, I have, let's talk blenders quickly. I have the inordinate good fortune of owning a Vitamix. If you buy a new one, it will cost you close to $500. But you will leave it till your children. It's a machine. Um, you can buy them re refurbished. Again, I'm not, I'm not a proponent of sell. I'm not making any money off of this. Um, I actually bought this. This has a great story with it. I bought this on Craigslist because when I started this many years ago, I was broke. And I bought a blender that I limped along with until I, it took me a year to find this on Craigslist and I paid 150 bucks for it. And I bought it from a guy who used it for 20 years. So, and I have been using it for another two. So it's a good machine is what I'm telling you. It's a basic mechanics machine. There's nothing about it. There's blend techs out there that a lot of people rave about. The Nutribullet you see in those infomercials on, actually a good product, kids. <laughs> it's 100 bucks. It's a great product. The other thing I will tell you is if you have one of those old um, blenders, because uh, power's where it's at. If it's not the right consistency, you're going to get a lot of turned up noses. And if you've got kids, what I recommend that you do is put them in sippy cups that they can't see through. They'll taste the fruit, but they won't see the grain. Um, if you've got one of those blenders that the, the bottom twists off of, you can actually get like a, a glass jar, a mason jar, that will fit over that. So you could put your fresh fruits and greens in that in the fridge at night, put a cover on it, add the liquid to it in the morning, and blend it up and take it with you. The other great thing about doing that is because the carafe on a power less blender, as I call them, um, if you put too much water in, it's just going to swim around. 
So what you want to do is start with less water. You can always thin it out afterwards, but you want to start with less water so the blades have something to engage on. If you screw a glass jar over it, then what it does is it forces the fruits and vegetables on top of the blade. So it's another way to maximize what you have. All right? The magic bullet comes in six cups already ready to put. Well, I'll tell you what about the magic bullet. I've got not the Nutri bullet. I have the magic bullet. I don't particularly care for it for doing this. The Nutri bullet I do. It's got a little bit more power. But the magic bullet is one of the most used items in my kitchen, and it's because it's got a flat blade that I can grind nuts into flour with. I use it almost every day. Grind coffee, anything hard you can grind in it. And it's not a coffee grinder, it's a bigger one. So, and I, the Nutribullet comes with the same thing. I had it, one of my last retreats, one of my clients told me, called me before the retreat and she said, uh, I just bought a Nutribullet and I said, will you bring it with you so we can play with it? And she said, sure. So everybody got to, to take it for a little ride around the block and uh, it worked out great. I want to tell you quickly, too, I see this. Um, in here, this is this month's issue of Pensacola Magazine I just got yesterday. I wrote an article in here. It's a bride's issue. I wrote an article on here on how to lose that last 10 or 15 pounds. It's for the brides, but it's for everyone, and it's um, by doing it with raw food. There's some in the back of the room for anybody who wants to take them. Um, and so we've got this, right? The other thing I've got here is a box. Now, I've got in this box two things. I've got some parsley. What I do with my greens is when I come home from the supermarket, I wash everything and I put them in a box. You want to make sure that you get a BPA-free plastic box. BPA is a not-so-friendly um, toxin. This isn't BPA-free, but you can shop in the store and find a brand that you like. Um, and I wash all my greens and I spin them in the, spin, the salad spinner. And I put them in here. I know you're not going to believe me when I tell you, but this has been in here for a week and a half. Week and a half. Still good. So I put my greens in there. I'll cover them with a damp cotton towel or a paper towel, or I'll wrap them up like I just did this one. So I wash these. I stick them in water. I rinse them really good. And then I stand out on the back porch and just <laughs> bless the people in my neighborhood. And then I just drop it in a glass until it dries, you know. And even if it wilts up a little bit, you just wet a damp paper towel, roll it up like this, and put it either in a plastic bag or the box. And it will keep. If you want to throw a little bit on top of your salad in the you know, or on a dish that you're making, take it out, chop off what you want, wrap it back up, and put it back in. Or you can do what I like to do, which is put it in the blender. And then this is really hard. Pay close attention. <laughs> Blender. And I washed these this morning. Don't ever wash your berries till before you use them. But I did wash these this morning. These are blueberries. Parsley. He asked what the first ingredient was. And I need to give a quick shout out to the people in... Uh, wait, don't tell me. Stanton and uh, Oleander, because they watched my last, um, my last video I did, and they have turned into health food junkies. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate it. So basically what I do is I make a blender full of this in the morning. And I know everybody wants recipes, right? Google green smoothie recipes yourself. I am not giving you recipes. I'm sorry. Open your fridge, dump some stuff in. Don't overthink it. You can find recipes. There's a woman, write her name down. It's Victoria Butenko, B-U-T-E-N-K-O. She is a mother of green smoothies. She is a fascinating Russian woman who lives on green smoothies. If you want more information about green smoothies, I highly recommend that you look her up. But my whole thing is about just not being confined by recipes. But every morning I make a, a this is it's basically what I do. I fill the blender up about this much and I put half of it with liquid. So whatever quantity of greens and fruit I have put in here, I fill it halfway with liquid 
and I blend it. My goodness, how hard was that? Right? I drank half for breakfast. The other half goes in a glass jar. It goes in my little lunch bag with me, and I either have it for a snack later in the morning or later in the afternoon. So I, whatever I feel compelled at with what's going on in my life at this current time, if I'm feeling like I'm not getting enough nutrition, I'll put a few things in there based on what I need. But if this is all you do and you don't put anything in there, I'm telling you, your life will start to change. It's not complicated. <clears throat> yep, I'm going to repeat that question. He said he talked about I talked about making it in the morning. Is there any uh, is there any nutrition loss to making a bunch and having it ahead of time? Um, ideally, you want to drink it as soon as you finish blending it. But if you make it today, you should consume it by tomorrow the same time. It's a 24 hour, hour window. You're not going to get sick from it. But the longer, what we've done by blending this food is we've increased the surface area on everything. So it's going to diminish, at a, it's going to get uh, less potent at a more rapid rate than something solid. So it won't kill you. You'll get the fiber, you'll get the water, but you won't get a lot of other stuff after 24 hours. Any other questions? Yeah, it's just habit. You can use the stems if you've got a straw, small enough blender. I don't usually wash the stems, and I compost, so um, it's easy for me to just throw those out in my yard. But if you've got a good blender and you want to wash, go for it. The question was, I did, didn't use the stems. Are those okay? And they're all good. It's all good. Part of the part of the process. Any other questions? Anybody brave enough to want to taste? Yeah. <clears throat> all right. I think I'm done. If we don't have any more questions.